In this smartphone show, a hands-on review of the Nokia E61i, the follow-up to the best-selling E61. I look at upcoming changes in Windows Mobile 6 and S60 3rd edition feature packs 1 and 2. What's happening, what's coming up? Also, a hands-on review of the Nokia E65. You'll remember me plugging my makeshift cardboard tripod holder for the Nokia N93 and 93i a couple of shows ago. Thankfully, the real thing, Nokia's DT22, is now officially available and cheap to it, only £12, or about $20, plus sales tax. Now, Nokia has been calling its N-series smartphones multimedia computers for some time now to assorted merriment from journalists and the public. But I can see where they're going with this idea. For example, fellow video blogger Steve Garfield loves demonstrating just what's possible, and in this video he shot the DVD-quality footage on his N95, edited it, including adding titles, uploaded it to his video blog for the world to see, and then, just for good measure, downloaded it again from his video blog and watched it through TV out into his widescreen TV, all with just the N95. No PC needed. That's pretty darned impressive, and I wish I'd thought of it before my prototype N95 had to go back. Never mind, a production N95 should be here any day now, and I'll be using it for several features on the smartphone show. Staying with the very top end of the smartphone world, news of two ultra-high-spec devices from the Windows Mobile world. E10 have caused a bit of a stir over the last few months with a spate of function-rich devices. The latest announced this week at CBIT is the Glowfish X800, sporting Windows Mobile 6 Professional, a full VGA screen, HSDPA data speeds, built-in GPS, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, plus a 2-megapixel camera, although you'd probably have to add a Bluetooth keyboard to make it fully functional. HTC has launched its Advantage range, being rebadged as, for example, the T-Mobile Amio. This is arguably more an ultra-mobile PC than a smartphone, but I, I like geek porn as much as the next guy, and this device's spec even exceeds the Glowfish just mentioned. Although at heart it's a standard Windows Mobile 5 Pocket PC, there's an 8GB hard disk, a VGA screen, an accelerometer, built-in GPS and TomTom -tom sat-nav software, a 3-megapixel stills camera and a full QWERTY keyboard that detaches and attaches using a magnetic connector. Of course, the size and weight means that this isn't going to fit a normal pocket, but hey, if you're trying to replace a laptop... And talking of pockets, a quick mention of GreatPockets.com, a humorous marketing idea from Nokia to make people think about how far convergence has come. The initiative reminded me of Nigel Clifford's keynote at the last smartphone show in London when he had a wheelbarrow of gadgets brought on stage before stating that a single smartphone could replace the lot. With devices like Nokia's N95 and E90, you really don't need a wheelbarrow or even great pockets. Uh, a single device in a normal pocket is all you need. Pretty cool. Now, some reviews are easy, some are hard. This, thankfully, is a really easy one. You'll remember the Nokia E61 from almost a year ago, back in Smartphone Show 10. It's an unashamedly messaging-focused smartphone styled like a Trio or BlackBerry with a full QWERTY thumb keyboard and running S60 3rd edition. At the time, I liked it, but I expressed a, a few minor reservations over some of the hardware decisions by Nokia. Well, that's all changed with this, the Nokia E61i, and what a difference an eye makes. The software is near damn identical, so let's look at the hardware improvements. For starters, it's slimmer, now only 13mm thick at its widest point. And yet Nokia have somehow squeezed in a very decent 2 megapixel camera with near TV quality video recording. No flash or autofocus now, but that would be overdoing it. The screen's the same great landscape 320 by 240 pixel display, but below this there are, there are two extra buttons, now launching contacts and the other app of your choice. The spiky old joystick's gone too, replaced by a very usable D-pad. Much, much better. Moving further down, the keyboard's improved too, with better shaped keys that require less pressure to activate. And, well, that's it really, unless you count the, the new black and silver colour scheme. Together with the, the nearly all-metal construction, this is one sturdy and hopefully reliable little communicator. Downsides, well, only the form factor, really. It's, it's very wide for a phone. But then with all the, uh, the usual 3G Wi-Fi and GPRS data, you're going to be far too busy browsing the web and answering emails to take any incoming calls. The Nokia E61i.
The two main smartphone operating systems have both been recently upgraded, or at least the announcements have been made, with physical devices running Windows Mobile 6 and S63 edition, feature packs 1 and 2 both on top of Symbian OS, of course, still a month or three away. Still, it's interesting to take a whistle-stop tour of what to expect from each. Windows Mobile 6, in addition to minor cosmetic differences, has quite a few enhancements to messaging, with a smart filter feature giving matches as you type to find text and emails. A server search helping business users search for emails back on their company exchange server, keypad shortcuts to common messaging operations, and full support for HTML code, images, and links in email. On the security front, expansion cards can now be encrypted or remotely wiped, and somewhat scarily, you can attach information rights management to any email documents to control who opens them. The Windows Mobile application set has been enhanced for version 6 with an upgraded calendar, complete with a neat ribbon along the top of the screen, showing availability, with Word, Excel and PowerPoint Mobile now available on all devices, even those without the touchscreen interface. A new internet sharing app makes it easy to use your smartphone to go online on a laptop, while Internet Explorer Mobile has had a lot of tweaks to help it render full-size websites. Windows Live Instant Messaging has now been integrated into the Today screen, where you can now see your status, and the built-in IM client has been enhanced for easier multi-party messaging, as well as sending pictures and voice clips. Finally, Media Player has been improved iPhone-style with smart filtering for searching large music collections. In parallel with this, Nokia's S60 3rd edition platform has received two updates over the last six months or so. Feature Pack 1 introduces new features such as firmware upgrade over the air, FOTA, you'll see this more in the coming year. It enables software upgrades to be performed over the air, initiated by either the user or operator. And a new all-singing, all-dancing version of Nokia's open source web browser. The new web has a pop-up toolbar with reload, frequently used links, minimap and search, support for WAP pages, so you no longer need the separate services browser, a desktop-like open link and new window function, a form autofill feature, a password manager, Atom support for blogs and news feeds, plus automatic RSS subscription when a website supports it. Finally, there's support for Flash content with Flashlight 2.0 on board. Away from the browser, there's full support for landscape modes for all applications, proper support for stereo and music playback over Bluetooth. S60 3rd edition feature pack 2 has further improved multimedia capabilities, making the most of the fast HSDPA support, a high speed USB, and support for hardware graphics accelerators. The interface has been tweaked to make S60's multitasking more obvious, with active applications appearing at the top of each menu, and with D-pad center mapped to a virtual third soft key at the screen's bottom center. There's also RSS feed support on the active standby screen and full screen pictures shown of incoming callers. Profiles, e.g. silent and offline, can be set up as timed, meaning that you don't have to remember to set them back afterwards. Quite a few changes in both operating systems then, all to be seen in smartphone hardware over the next year or so. As with the E61i recently reviewed, the E65 is a comparatively easy smartphone to get to grips with. In fact, you could sum it up as simply a slim S60 3rd edition slider. Photos you've seen around the web of the E65 don't really do it justice. It's quite a bit slimmer than you might think and looks set to be the business smartphone for the next year or so. I can see companies buying the E65 in bulk. It's diminutive and genuinely phone sized and the slimmest slider I've seen to date. An extra touch of class is led by the uh, leather effect battery cover, which also serves to give extra grip when you want to uh, open it one-handed. All Nokia's and new E-Series business devices have cameras now, with the E65 having the same 2 megapixel stills camera and TV quality video recording as seen in the E61. I guess companies are starting to trust their staff at last. Expansion is on micro SD this time, as you'd expect from such a small form factor. Wi-Fi adds the magic touch that enables this to be a true voice over IP phone, in addition to the usual phone data in 3G. Quoting from Nokia's launch press release, Nokia E65 can be integrated with leading corporate telephony systems, with Nokia IntelliSync Call Connect for Cisco, IntelliSync Call Connect for Alcatel, and Avaya, I hope I've pronounced that right, One X Mobile Edition for Nokia Solutions. Whew. Well, that should be enough for most companies. And there's the usual Outlook and Exchange email support from Nokia. 
unusually and with a nod towards the phone and voice over IP function there are extra buttons on the front panel of the E65 dedicated to conference call setup, uh, muting the current call and accessing your contacts, plus an extra configurable button that can launch whatever you want. The E65 won't set the internet alight but it'll have a big impact on Nokia's business focused strategy. With such a neat form factor I wish it well. The Nokia E65